And then welcome to Singapore Polytechnic. We're now going to find out how to use this amazing piece of test equipment called an oscilloscope. Now, when you come along to lab with this oscilloscope, it could be used by anybody and it could be completely messed up. So let's just see. It's switched on, no trace at all. So let's turn the intensity up right the way in and back a bit. Uh, oh, we've got three position controls. This position, let's put that in the center. There's another position control. Put that in the center. Another position control, put that in the center. Oh, now we're starting to get something. Lovely, lovely. Now, let's just see what else we've got. There's a time per division control. Put that in the center. Ah, now we're getting something. But it's all over the place. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. We've got volts per division control. Yeah, somewhere in the center. This one, somewhere in the center. Lovely. What else we got? We've got input switches here. So, um, yes, good. Down at DC is lovely. Down at DC is lovely. Oh, we've got a mode control. Channel 1, channel 2, dual or add. Hmm. Well, we're just going to use channel 1 for now. Let's go for channel 1. So that's basically the display over here. Intensity is just nice. Very bright or not at all. Let's put it something in the middle. Focus is good when you get a steady trace. Now, other very, very important thing. We've got some variable controls. These are small ones which are in the middle of the big controls. They have a cal position, short for calibrated. Must be right hand click to cal. Right hand click to cal. Whoa, that makes the trace go bigger. Right hand click to cal. Very important. Now, there's one area over here I haven't talked about. It's called trigger. Trigger is to enable the oscilloscope to draw our graph, our electronic graph, from the same point every time. At the moment, it's a complete mess because it's starting at different times. Here, I've got an analogy for you. Imagine I'm catching a ball, catching a ball, catching a ball. If my hands are too high, I can't catch the ball because it's coming lower. This is the ball. If my hands are too low, I can never catch it. I must have my hands where the ball is. How do we set the oscilloscope for this? Controls over here. Oh, it's a complete mess. We've got auto, normal, TV vertical, TV horizontal. Hey, take my advice. Use auto. Very, very good. Still haven't solved it. Oh, where's the trigger coming from? Where's the source? External line channel 2, channel 1. Let's make it channel 1. Yes. Oh, now we've got a steady trace. Very good. We are catching the ball. And we can see where we're catching the ball by looking at the beginning of the trace. If I adjust the level, it's like moving the hands up and down for catching the ball. It's good to have somewhere in the middle just to start with. If you go too high, can't catch. If you go too low, can't catch. Somewhere in the middle, just nice, up to you. Right, we have a trace on the screen, that's fantastic. But I've got no idea what the signal is. Let's see if we can measure it. Now, we have on the oscilloscope, like a television, which is showing a picture. You've seen this before, right? With a video camera and a TV. Now, what's happened is we zoomed in too far. With a camera, we have to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Here on the oscilloscope, we've got two zoom controls. We can zoom vertically and zoom horizontally. Let's zoom out horizontally. Oh, look, you see? We can really zoom out. Let's get it so we can see the whole shape. Fantastic. Similarly, with the volts per division control we have down here, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. It's best to zoom in until you can see the whole shape on the screen. That is how the oscilloscope works. Now, last thing, let's make some measurements. We can move up and down so that we can get it nice and convenient. How many volts high? We have one, two, 3.6 divisions. 3.6 divisions, 3.6 squares there. On the scale here, it says 0.2. So how many volts is it? 3.6 times 0.2, which is going to be how much? 0.72 volts. Then, how about the time? Well, again, we can move the trace to our convenience. We can either use the position control, or, as it's a sloping waveform, even our trigger level can be quite useful sometimes. Up to you. See what works. 
How many divisions long is this cycle? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven point eight. Seven point eight what? Well, we have 0.5 milliseconds per division. If it's one, di one millisecond per division, it will be 7.8 milliseconds. This is half of that. So it's going to be 3.8 milliseconds. That's how long it is. So we know the height and we know how long the cycle is. One more thing to look at. Down here, we have a ground position for the input. There we go. The ground is somewhere in the middle. We can put it nice and conveniently on the center line. This means now when we go to DC, the voltage is going up 1.4 volts. It's going down uh, 1.4 divisions, sorry. So times 0.2, you can work that out for yourself. It's 0.28 volts. Going down 1, 2, 2.4 divisions. 2.4 divisions times 0.2 is going to be 0.48 volts going down. There you are, quick mental arithmetic. There you are, that's a scope, you can do many things. It's very, very convenient to use. You just need to not be scared, not panic, and use it with confidence. And when you can use it with even more confidence, you can put two signals in at the same time, if you have the second channel. Enjoy using the scope.